what's up everybody we got two pitching machines here today we have the slider light 360 this thing costs hundred and eighty dollars then we have the heater real baseball pitching machine this thing costs four hundred fifty dollars with the auto feeder we're gonna compare these two we're gonna do things such as velocity accuracy uh, time of setup ease of setup um, and then also the we're gonna judge these auto feeders you know, some auto feeders can be a little fast. You can't see the ball well. So we'll judge all that. We'll get my personal preference at the end of the video. So first up, this truck in the background is being loud. Lighter light pitching machine. It can adjust, the head can adjust any sort of way. Let's do that. Okay, just like that. That'd be a right-handed slider, left-handed slider curveball, anything like that. You can even twist it all the way around for a 12-6 uh, curveball. It says it throws these white balls up to 60 miles an hour, and then I have some green baseballs as well, some green light balls. They're basically like wiffle balls. It says they throw them up to 80 miles an hour. This pitching machine throws real baseballs up to 52 miles an hour, it says. Now, it only throws fastballs, no breaking balls, anything like that, but it has an auto feeder. Nice. Let me show the batteries for these. Fire light, we have this little flash fish battery it's a 110 volt and i believe 180 watt or 100 150 watt battery that works perfect for this machine i believe this was about 200 dollars but before you buy it don't buy it yet because i have a better option this jackery explorer 300 it is 110 volt 300 watt battery it runs this thing perfectly well it'll run it for about three to four hours at a time before even losing full charge so this would be a much better option if you're going to use, if you're potentially ever going to move up from machines. I had bought that one, the light ball machine first, and then moved on to this machine, had to get another battery. Actually, I just stole this from my dad, so. As you can tell, it's a different day out here. Yesterday got way too windy to keep filming. Um, the light ball machine wouldn't have done that well in those high wind gusts. Um, I'm still getting a little bit of wind here and there, but uh, it'll showcase the machine a little bit better and as you guys have seen I haven't really posted a video in about two months I had an eight-week layoff. I hurt my right wrist my top hand wrist pretty bad um, So I just started swinging about a week or two ago. But I got my brand new pitch machine I've hit off hit off it a couple times. I'm feeling a lot better feeling a lot stronger I have a lot more videos coming up if you guys know me I've done a lot of bat reviews challenges bat modifications. I made my own baseball one time like two years ago um, I have a lot more videos and a lot more ideas like that coming up. If you like that kind of content, then hit that subscribe button. The support means a lot. As you can see, everything fits well and easy in this little box. As you guys saw, the, the light ball machine right here, it was very easy to carry. It's very easy to carry, uh, transport, everything like that. And this real ball machine, you guys will see a video of me carrying it. Imagine carrying that two, the length of two or three baseball fields like I have to sometimes from where I park. There's no easy uh, grip on here so you have to hook in here it's easier if you remove the auto feeder and the legs so it's very tough to pick up the machine might be 30 or 40 pounds I'm not 100 percent sure it's decently heavy especially as that walk goes on you definitely feel it but the machine the real ball machine is a little bit faster to set up about 10 seconds faster and it already comes preset height wise. So I'll show you real quick. Right here is the knob to adjust it. I set that up one time and I haven't touched it. Now I've only hit with this two or three times by now, but uh, or tested it two or three times. And I haven't, I haven't moved it once since I adjusted it the first time. Over here on the light machine, you have to actually adjust this. You have to tighten this and let's loosen it. The machine should, then you have to adjust this up and down to whatever height you think is good, which depending on the day, it's different. You need two hands, because obviously that happens otherwise. Tighten it back, and then you have to turn it on and try it again, and keep messing with it until you get the right height. Now for setup, the victory definitely goes to the real ball machine. 
it's much easier it's just plug and play pretty much you get everything set up you plug the legs in you plug the auto feeder in you turn it on full blast and you're good to go got the pocket radar for velo we're just going to take about three each this is probably pretty loud but three velos each see which one is the closer to the advertised target 42 41 41 44 45 43 41 42 40 either of them were close they were both about the same velo um, the real machine was closer to its estimate now I would say this has to do with two things one both these machines are very used the real machines about two years old the light machine is about six months old with a lot of use and obviously this is probably not as heavy duty um, so this is what you can sort of expect after a period of heavy use you know maybe six months a year two years of use of heavy use you can expect both the machines to either lose a little bit of juice or because we're using a battery we're losing a bit of juice For the auto feeders, I showed you clips of how long it takes in between pitches, which easily goes to the real machine because you get eight and a half seconds. It's enough for me to pull a ball in the air left center and then keep a ball, you know, backspin a ball low right center you know this little machine only has six and a half seconds between pitches it's impossible to hit pitch after pitch you're rushing your mechanics get bad you know you you don't take a good high effort swing right do the presentation of the ball with this machine it just sort of drops out and goes in real quick you don't have a lot of time you really need to anticipate that this you see the arm come over nice and easy it makes it nice and easy presentable you know so you have plenty of For the accuracy portion of this video, we have our cheap flea market catcher's mitt, cost me about a dollar, and home base. Oh. Hey, come on, baby, come on. Come on. Got our trusty flea market glove. Oh, that's out. I would have took out the camera. Yeah, that's a strike, that's a good pitch to hit. Oh, that's out. Little high. I'll give it to it though, two for four. Yeah, three for five, I guess. It's a little high, I wouldn't swing at that though. So I'll say two for five, I wouldn't swing at that. I wouldn't swing at that either. There's a good pitch. So I'm um, three for seven. That's not bad. Um, usually it ends up getting away during the round, so I'm gonna say four for eight, and I would usually scoot over as the round goes on from what I've experienced. Oh, that's a firm pitch. That's good. Five for nine. Six for ten. So I think I'm a little misaligned right here. I think I should have home plate. If you look at the leg, I would probably have home plate here. So I'm going to say that's a little bit closer to six to ten. Six for ten. Ooh, it's going to hit me. I just... Oh. I didn't say that. I didn't say anything. That was a strike. I think that was a strike, guys. Well, that's a strike. Right down the pipe. Four for four. Five for five. I'm telling you, I never had it this easy when I used these. That's a little low. Five for six. Six for seven. That's a clean sweep for the light balls. I think it's safe to say, despite the wind, the light ball machine was much more accurate.
Gabo. that one on the 